<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the whole the whole policy is working so well because Singapore's doing so well at the Asian Cup. Yeah. Oh, no, they're not there. I forgot. Hello, and welcome back to part two of Yahoo Footballing Weekly, the global award-nominated podcast yeah. with me, Yahoo Columns Neil Humphreys. And me, Yahoo editor, Chan Kyung. And him, back with us, Eddie. Hey, guys, again. Thanks, guys. And as always, thank you. It's because of you and your many diverse comments and questions and queries that has made us an award-nominated podcast. But we need your vote. Yep. So we've been nominated for the Diverse Voices Award and the Sports Podcast Awards, Annual Sports Podcast Awards. This is fourth time is holding this. So we are up against about 10 or 11 other, mm. other mm-hmm. names in it. Some of some it helped by Ian Wright. Yep. One helped by J- uh, Jermaine Defoe. And Troy Dini, I think. So, well, we are we are with uh, strong opposition, but we will welcome you to vote for us uh, in the uh, uh, in this website, and then we can maybe maybe who knows maybe maybe who knows maybe <laughs> yeah. But do 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 help us by voting for us. The deadline is twenty eighth of, of January. Yeah, uh, the results will be out next month. Hopefully, we have good news for you. Hopefully, miracles can happen, miracles. like void deck football becoming legal. <laughs> never going to happen. Never, never going to happen. Which leads us to our comments. Yes. Thanks as always for the comments. <laughs> Thanks as always. So last week we talked about you know the recent cases of you know void decks and street soccer courts being closed down because of uh, excessive noise and you know residents complaining. So it, it got a lot of you know discussion online and everywhere. So this guy Onan. Oh, Nana. Oh, Nana. Oh, Nana. But that can't be right because this guy can use his hands because <laughs> he's well, typed it. Yes, he typed it. And then he says, yes, kids nowadays cannot even book futsal courts due to their financial capability. So SG government, please consider building more street soccer courts or provide more subsidies for futsal courts for students. This garnered a reply from one of our long-time uh, uh, commenters, Wenlong82. Uh, he says... Well, there's a need to strike a fine balance between building more street soccer courts at the expense of infrastructure, such as housing, or for that matter, providing subsidies from government coffers. To provide subsidy, where do we get the income source? Cut the spendings from other ministries? Increase the tax- taxations? <laughs> other stakeholders will be sure to make noise on why football is getting the extra funding when performances are diabolical, to say the least. Wow. This looks like, like a like an argument between a government official and a member of the public. Yeah. It's like, oh, the member of the say, we want this. Then about the like, but where? We need to tax more. Then. Yeah, it's simply go all over again. Yeah. But, uh, okay, this is where I'm going to take a different tack this week. Mm. I have some sympathy for the second one, Yeah, believe it or not, because... Sometimes we live in a bit of a bubble. We know that. Yeah. The three of us, we love our football. We're passionate about our football and so on and so on. But Singapore football can't always ask for more money. Oh, yeah. When it doesn't have the clout now. Yes. Yeah. And especially if kids are not playing. Yeah. Because I took a walk around my housing estate in Senkang the other day. And there was no one playing football. No one. Literally no one. Where I grew up, you'd see people playing everywhere. And I don't want to keep going on about Ang Moors, England and all that. But if you go to Malaysia, you'll see people. If you go to Indonesia, you'll see people. Yeah. So... But when I go to the shopping mall, I see hundreds, hundreds of kids going to tuition. I mean, if we had as many kids playing football in Senkang as we do doing tuition, we'd be winning the Asian Cup. So it does get a bit hard sometimes for us to constantly say, we demand this and we demand that, when maybe the demand itself isn't, there. isn't always there. Yeah, I agree, I agree. Um but I also think that tech, uh, sponsoring subsidies for, you know, subsidizing for 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 students for street soccer costs, I think it's a bit too much. Mm. Yeah, like you said, because, you know, um, whether there's a demand and whether, you know, um, whether it's worth it or not. <laughs> I mean, like, I, I, and I agree with Wen Long saying football, the standards have really fallen far below. I mean... Now it doesn't have clout anymore. Football. Yeah. I think I don't think it has a, as much clout as it did. No, in the no. ten years before, when when people said, "Well, we are going for goal twenty ten, we should want to, the kids to play football." But no, now there's nothing happening. I mean, based on results and, yeah, and interest, results, it's you, very you, hard to. It'd be hard to make a case for it being the national sport. Yeah. I know that's controversial, but it's kind of where we are, yeah. Eddie. Yeah, but I think what we can do is just look into more multi-purpose courts. So mm. you, these multi-purpose courts, as you know, you can be used for like funerals and whatnot and everything, but. Um, Singapore is actually quite doing quite well in many emerging sports. So floorball, I think we're in the top 20, I think, yeah. in the world. Yes. Right? Chook ball, I think we're in the top five. 
So yeah. all these um, courts actually serve a multitude of sports. We should try to build more of them. Yeah, I agree. And you know, in Singapore, rain always, you know, bearer of bad news when you're <laughs> all excited for a Sunday league game and then rain, lightning. Yeah. So why don't we just convert more of these or rather build more of these multi-purpose halls which can be converted. Of course, it's a different game. Fut- futsal is a slightly different game. Yep. Play on a hard court. But you know, at least there's another scouting ground for people who can play. And I think if they're government built, then these facilities shouldn't be that expensive mm. to, to, to what do you call it? To rent yeah. for these kids. And if it serves all kinds of sports, then you don't get that many stakeholders saying, oh no, why is it football is being whatever? No, because th- this can be used for chokeball, this can be used for yep. ball, this can be used for wushu performance, right? So hope, maybe that's one way for them to go. I'm not so sure. I actually agree with that. In fact, yeah. it ties in very nicely with our next commentary. Yeah. It's that idea again about the lack of available <coughs> spaces, isn't it? Not That's having right. places to play. Right. James Tan says, forget the game unless you are willing to burn a hole by sending your kids to the money-grabbing top <laughs> club academies. You heard about the Real Madrid or Barcelona schools. I heard some parents literally paid their way for their sons in soccer to DSA, direct school admission. Yet, our soccer is still crap. Why? This is because fundamentally we lack a strong foundation and envisioning what to do, what is right. Forget about the sports. Just watch South Korea win the Asian Cup or your favourite EPL teams. A bit, a bit like South Korea is not stuff. winning the Asian Cup. Oh, I'm sticking with them. I'm sticking with them. <laughs> I'll get back to that later. They're led by a Spurs legend, so failures in the oh, DNA. I'm sticking, oh. I'm sticking with them. I'm sticking with the diver. That's bomber. I'm sticking with Klinsmann. But, but... There's a good point there. Yeah. There is actually yeah. a good point there because Singapore being Singapore, right? Wealthy nation. You can't move in Singapore without seeing a banner for some football academy. Yeah. Sporting Lisbon, Barcelona, Real Madrid, this one, well, Active SG. French you know, football I've academy. always questioned how good they, they actually serve. Yeah. I agree with that. Mm. But the point is, and this ties in nicely with, uh, I think it's James's point, we act like the academies are the be all and end all. You still got to play outside of the yeah. academy. You can't play <clears throat> once or twice a week. And you know, expect- your Lionel Messi's and Wayne Rooney's and Jack Grealish's or whoever, they're playing yeah. every day. They're playing thousands and thousands of hours of football before they even get to the Manchester City Academy level. Just sending a kid down for two hours <laughs> once a week at any academy. At high, at high cost. Places. Money grabbing. <laughs> exactly. It's not enough. Unless we have, to your point, unless we have more readily available spaces for kids to play outside of the academies. Mm. I don't know how much difference an academy, once a week academy can make. So I think it's two things, right? One is when you have all these other public spaces available for people to use, then that allows for a bigger, wider talent pool that these academies can pluck from. But once you're in the academies as well, I think the problem in Singapore is that even if I give you super good training, you're only as good as your opposition, right? Mm. So these Currently, unfortunately, these players still have to go out of Singapore. I mean, Singapore Sports School, right, essentially is what uh, we were talking about, which is thousands and thousands of hours of football. Yep. But you're playing against yourselves, yep. right? So there's a limit. Yes, they're good. So players like Madhu are very good players, but there's a limit to how many of those players you can produce. And we still have to go out at this current stage. Hopefully, Lion City Sailors bucks the trend. Hopefully, Tampanese and their deal with BG Pato means that more Singaporean boys, talented ones, can go to Bangkok to develop. Nice. But until more and more of these initiatives come up, I, I don't see how we can make the leap to even challenge Vietnam and Thailand. That's what Durik said last time. Vietnam and Thailand, yeah. I, don't, I don't even want to compare to Japan and Korea. Yeah. Right? Such a good point. Such a good yeah. point. But to wrap it up, let's get one in from Shahid, <laughs> who, who's got a bit of a tendency to look back at the good old days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I saw this one, I just couldn't help but laugh. So Shahid Tarawi said, in the 80s, we didn't care about the no <laughs> playing signs. We just play. These days, kids follow the rules. They aren't as daring as we were back then. (laughs) It's a good point, Shahid, but there were more places to play back in the 80s. That's the reality. You could have played at Bishan, Farrah Park, Sentosa, Bangkok, Tampani, Senkang. There were green fields everywhere. Even that green field at at, at, at the housing estate somewhere, just a... The crappy greenfield. It's still people we used to play in Orchard Road yeah. in the 90s. You remember that? Where SMU is now, yeah. on a Saturday afternoon, you could see people playing That's almost right. a full-size game Those of football. Were the days. I would say also, I mean, population wasn't as dense back then. No, it was right? only so three minutes. Now everyone's packed in and obviously there's going to be the... I'm a bit irritated because I'm working from home. I'm struggling to hear what my boss is saying and some kid outside is like kicking oh. and shouting Hokkien vulgarities, which is the complaint that was made in the Sounds papers. like my kind of footballer. So... <laughs> I mean, I have sympathy for all the groups. 
of course, I'm a bit biased because I want a thriving football ecosystem. But it's not a problem that will go away quickly. And I don't think it's as simplistic as saying the kids don't dare to play. I've seen kids dare to play in places like that. And it's they just, get paid, punished for it. That's the thing. The there's just, fewer, there's yeah. just fewer of such places. Yeah. And the people will come out to say, can you please stop playing because my baby is trying to sleep or whatever. And if these kids are nice kids, they'll go away. Yeah. Right? So... Is it really yeah, because we're getting better educated and more 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 yeah. more empathetic people? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the uh-huh. whole the whole policy is working so well because Singapore's doing so well at the Asian Cup. Yeah. Oh no, they're not there. I forgot. Oh, I forgot. Let's oh, move on to the undefeated the Asian Cup. We're never there. <laughs> uh, Cup favorites are struggling. Korea, Ooh. Japan. I'm getting this out there first because I got a soft spot for Korea. I'm not panicking. I'm yeah. sticking with my Koreans. I think they'll come good. I think Klinsman made a good point. It's an obvious point. It's just that the the gap is narrowing now between the likes of Korea and Japan and uh, the other nations who are doing well. And, and there. Qatar is doing very well. You remember Jordan. a few few months ago, we were talking about Singapore versus Korea during the World Cup qualifiers, and we said the Koreans are so well built, yes, physically strong, look physically strong compared stronger, to Singapore. Compared to Singapore, now you put them compared to the Arabian uh, nations, yeah. like. Like Jordan, they were against Jordan, or yeah, and and they struggle because that's the other league. The, the, the Arabians are yeah. much more robust than the South Koreans, and that's where that's why Japan struggled against Iraq because hmm. because they were they were Iraq pressed them hard. Good point. And then and then just you no know, keep on pestering them, trap them in the very like like play like a Liverpool like very high up front. And they, and they committed the errors which led, led to their two goals. Yeah. What do you make of it, Eddie? I know you've been watching most of the games. Yeah, no, I, I think Japan is still finding their feet. Yeah. They, I mean, on their eventual way to becoming champions. But um, Korea, <laughs> Korea, I really love some of the players. But I mean, I, I can't find it in myself to like Son Heung-min. I'm half Japanese. Oh, I'm half Japanese. Oh, I, no, no, I'm no, half no. Japanese. I'm an Arsenal fan. I think, you know, my dad would kill me if I... If I <laughs> hey, my friend, you and I were both there in the mix zone. When yeah. Spurs were there. I know yeah. you're not a big Spurs fan. There was only one Spurs player who stopped and spoke to the media and spoke to the fans. Who was it? Son. Son Young Min, yeah. He's a good guy. You've got to admit, he's a good yeah. guy. He's a people pleaser. He's just not a Tottenham. He's not an Arsenal <laughs> well, fan pleaser. He can't okay, say, you can read the answer from like, like, <laughs> No comments. No, no comments. Yeah, but... And, okay, and their manager is like a former Spurs legend oh. as well, so... You know, they're, they're destined for failure. Oh, take it, he take said, it I like me. Tottenham. I can't support <laughs> West Ham. I'm sticking with my boy, San Hong Min. Daryl Spikerman is like, oh, why are you just sticking with but, but, but I think the big positive is that um, we, in Singapore, we have coverage from me yeah. watch. And, and the kids, and hopefully they're watching this. Cause yeah. And see the if golf. They, if they think that, you know, the Asian Cup is for like lesser known teams and all that, these teams are playing fantastic football. Yeah, yeah. which brings it back yeah. to a little bit closer to home. Obviously, you know, think. correct. Malaysia, Vietnam are already at a different layer to us, mm. different level to us. And, and yet, they, when you put them in the Asian Cup, yeah. it's a golf. Yeah. No, but that's why we have to be there, you see. Mm. That's yeah. why we have that's to be why, there. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And it's such a miss for us to not overcome Kyrgyzstan and get, get there. Yeah. Yeah. But what do you make of the Southeast Asian teams? Disappointed? I think... Uh, slightly, um, I think I think I was hoping Malaysia would do better, but mm. I, I think it's their it's their jitters after being away from the competition for like seventeen years. Mm. This is their first since two thousand and seven, if I'm not wrong. And and they, it shows. I mean, they were they lost four 0 in their first match, and then they need to win their second match against Bahrain, and they played very well. Unlucky. They Unlucky. Were, but the last part, they at, right at the end, they lost their minds a bit. They, Anyhow, school uh, clearance mm. into a corner that that yeah. corner should have been avoided. Correct. And then yeah. and then when the corner came in and then the guy hits it, and I like oh no Yeah. I mean it's it's a, it's a waste. And then it, and then now now the coach Kim Pangon is like questioning himself whether he's the right person to mm. to take take the team and longer anymore. So now all the doubts come creep back again. But they were pretty good. Last among, about last year they were they they were winning their World Cup qualifiers. So that was dis- disappointing. But Thailand are doing well. Mm. I think Thailand, um, they are still unbeaten. I think they got one win and one draw so far. And they look, I think they, they just need to beat, is it Indonesia? Mm. I well, can't like, remember actually. Uh, but but, but they're in a good they, position yeah, to qualify. Good position to qualify. Points already. Yeah, so yeah. so that that is despite they had a very poor build up. I think yeah. so 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 I think Thailand are the, you know. I think they're still the powerhouses of the nation, despite Vietnam coming up in recent years. Mm. Um, but Vietnam are a bit 
inexperienced when it comes to dealing with big major major um, tournaments. Vietnam like are also. missing some key players, yeah. So oh, I that, think that's true. Tian Lin and also Quang Hai are not playing. Yeah. New coach coming in. Yep. New coach has decided to go with youth. So I think that that's probably mm. some pundits were already expecting this. Some pundits were expecting much better, I guess. So. Philip Trussier is actually getting a lot of flack mm. in Vietnam for the team's performances. Yeah. The only thing I'd say about Malaysia was watching their game. I saw another lesson from Malaysia for Singapore, a small one. Mm. That young lad, Stuart Wilkin, he caught my eye. I'd never seen him before. He's 25 years old, an old school box to box <laughs> Stephen Gerrard type midfielder. The kind of player that used to play in the Singapore Premier League years ago, Jason Ainsley at Jurong comes John to Wilkinson. mind. Yeah, John Wilkinson, yeah. old Bush, if you go back even further, Ernie Tapai. Yeah. The kind of players that yes. Singapore should be getting now. Mm. I didn't realize that Wilkin has uh, Malaysian heritage. Mm. Signed him up. That's the way to go. Nationalised player. Um, he's a bit of a journeyman player. I checked his career. He's been through North America. He played in England. He's been all around. And now they've got him into Malaysia. And he was arguably their best player in that yes. game. This is the kind of naturalised heritage player sure. that Singapore should be getting. Very young, man. We should be getting Absolutely. I mean, it's a no-brainer. It was right <laughs> there. He was Malaysia's best player on the pitch. Box to box. Great performance. Yeah. Good engine. Kept running. What more do you want? Yeah, the yeah. only thing I felt, uh, I mean, that's that's the observation we get. The the fans now that now that Malaysia are out of the the, the Asian Cup, um, the fans are turning on the naturalized players. That's oh, the really? First, that's the first target <laughs> they aim for. I mean, so sure I know. Yeah, but uh... I mean, it's it's a bit irrational, but you know, they say oh, they don't they don't fight as much as the local players. It wasn't the game I saw. I mean, yeah, Arif but, Ayman played well. I like yeah, Arif Ayman but, on the but wing. But that's the risk that lateral players might, might, might run because they'll be the first to blame. But isn't that just yeah. a form of racism yeah. slash xenophobia? It is this, uh, and the guy is Malaysian. He's half yeah. Malaysian yeah. as I understand yeah, it. But it, the thing uh, is that, wow, that's always the thing that local, local, local players give more to the cause. But, which is, I mean, but, I but the guy who made the bad clearance, he wants to, Totally. And, yeah. and by most of the reports I read and the footage that I saw, yeah. Wilkin was among the yeah, best players. I mean, I mean, that's, um, that's given, yeah, but sometimes a bit irrational kind of yeah. reaction. But as always, let us know what you think. Does Singapore need more naturalised players, heritage players? Yes. Send your comments to <laughs> Yahoo Southeast Asia on YouTube, Yahoo SG, Yahoo underscore MY on Twitter, Yahoo SEA on TikTok. I'm sure you can repeat this. I don't even repeat yeah, it anymore. Yeah. Well, we wrap this up. He's got the jersey on. He's got the jersey on. New season coming soon for the Singapore Premier League. Where are we at with the Lion City Sailors, Eddie? Quite quiet by their standards. Quite quiet, yes, actually. So, I mean, the women's team, there's been a bit of upheaval, but the men's team, quite quiet. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that the players actually just went through a very grueling season, if you think right, about it. Right. Very long season. A lot of them are Singapore nationals as well. Mm. So the Singapore nationals, you know, they have been traveling to Korea. Some of them, I mean, they, they joke and they say that they are almost like Korean citizens really because <laughs> they've been to Korea so many times in a span of two months, right? right? John so, Book and everybody. Correct. John Book and then with the national, national team as well. Team, so yeah. they are tired, I think, physically and mentally. And I think um, a lot of people are asking why has Albrecht started, Geylang started their preseason, why has LCS not? And I think the answer should be, I mean, I haven't checked with anyone, but the answer should be that the players need a longer break mentally. Uh, fair enough, fair yeah. enough. But also, I mean, every year, we, we now we're getting used to Sailor signing one, Marquee signing, like, yeah. and, and, and you have let Diego Lopez go. So, yes. you know, I mean... People are like, well, is it happening? Is it happening this season? <laughs> we we hope we hope that you know we hope that uh, a good signing will come. Obviously, yeah. for me, it's not about the the how big the name is, and I do wonder in the sailors' transfer plan transfer plans this year, right? Whether they'll be going once again for quality as they have done mm. with Diego Lopez, with Shiro Zivkovic. Um, big names, but not like huge names. And mm. when I mean huge names, I mean like Jermaine Pennant. So that wasn't a huge yeah, raise. That uh, was a, oh, don't well, even I mean, start me off with Jermaine Pennant. Jermaine the Champions League final. So he joined us with one leg. Yeah, and that's then he, true. He that's could true. barely oh, stand. But, but that's true. But you know what? Paul, 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 that one wasn't that good. Okay, yeah. but you know what I mean, right? Because when you, the club might decide to go for, let's get the fans into the stadium now. 
And mm. the one quick way to do that would be to get someone like maybe two years ago, right? Get Cesc Fabregas in, right. for example. And that was actually mooted, right? That was actually a mooted transfer. I'm trying not to laugh here, but no, I mean, I'm I like the Lion City Sailors, but Cesc Fabregas? I'm not kidding. Well, the, the deal was interesting. <laughs> the deal was interesting. You would get I a mean, crowd in, Arsenal fans. Well, that would uh, be true, yes. No, that would get a crowd in, but yeah. I think, you know, the, the, the assessment was made that, you know, how, how is he going to last on the, our plastic yeah, pitches correct. and everything? So I think the club went for quality, but I do wonder whether this time around they will mm. go for a name. I don't know. I do think that Zivkovic, he came in like the second half of last season. Yes. And start, it took some time for him to acclimatize, but during the AFC uh, Champions League and and he was getting much, much better yeah. improving. I think this season, I, I, think, I think he will be the person to look out I, for. I think he'll explode mm. as well. Are and you disappointed about Lopez leaving? Are you okay? Oh, I'm sad. Very sad, mm. of course. I think he's one of those who, even when he's having a not so good game, he gives you one or two moments of real yeah, magic. Yeah, he and Lestian were yeah, brilliant. It's brilliant. Uh, brilliant to watch. And mm. I really hope that the club replaces him adequately. Mm. Which is why at first when there were rumours that it was Roya Taniguchi who was going to replace him, everyone was like, Ooh, that, that that's a good. huge downgrade. Like, the dude scored <laughs> tons of goals and everything but in the not, SPL, but he's not mm. Diego Lopez. Yeah. Mm. Well, there are rumours in my household that my daughter has become a Lion City Sailors hey. fan. And I cannot tell you how disappointed I am about this. How many Why? bandwagons is she going to jump on? <laughs> Manchester Why City, Why Lion City Sailors. Why not be a Hong Kong fan? She should be a Hong Kong whore yeah. like me. Yeah. I don't know, but this is where it's going. So you're confident for the next season? Of course. I'm all very right. confident. What, what do you right. guys think? Are these boys going to win the title again? Send for all your sure. comments too. Yahoo Southeast Asia on YouTube. Yahoo SG. Yahoo underscore MY on Twitter. Yahoo SEA on TikTok. Thanks, Eddie, as always. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah. And hopefully, thanks. before the season begins, we'll get you back again. Or oh, hopefully, hopefully if Arsenal wins the title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll get you back when South Korea win the Asian Cup. <laughs> and you can come in wearing your Sun Hongming jersey. It's not going to happen. Burst I jersey. love the South Korean people, but, but Son Hyung Min, no. <laughs> oh, uh, ignore the him, only ignore person him. I, I know. The only person I know who doesn't like Sonny. We love Sonny. We love Sonny on this show. And we love you on this show. Don't forget, please vote for us. Last chance for the Diverse Voices Award. Thanks, as always, for the comments. And we'll see you next week. Take care.